Hey everybody, I got Gino, Gino Stone here with me. Um, a guy I've got a ton of respect for, having played against him and uh, appreciate his game and, and all the things that he brings to the table. Great communicator, uh, physical player, great awareness, makes it really difficult on opposing teams' offenses. He's gonna be a tremendous fit for, for what we do here on defense. And, and the thing that you gotta respect about Gino is, is he's been through it all in his career and he's earned everything he's gotten. And so for this moment here, signing as a free agent, um, I, I would imagine is a big moment for him. I'm not gonna speak for him, I'll let him speak to that, but he's earned, he's earned every step in this, this, his NFL journey. And um, so, you know, I, I know we're gonna get the best out of him with, with do over the last day. So I'll turn it over here. Uh, no, it's definitely, it's, it's crazy. It's definitely a team I, I never would have thought of at first, but, um, you know, everything happens for a reason. Uh, you know, I'm grateful for this opportunity. Um, you know, I'm just going to try to make the most of it. What did you get the sense that the Bengals were going to be a team that, that this could be a possibility? Um, you know, I kind of I knew early on just looking at teams that, that needed safety needs. And, um, you know, for me, it was it was going to a team that has a great quarterback, great head coach, um, team I know has great defense, uh, that plays hard. Um, you know, and this is one of them teams. One of your seven interceptions with Joe Burrow, the great quarterback, you talked about, you talked about how you disguised. I mean, you, you, you fooled him, and that's hard to do. I mean, he's a football savant. Uh, what was it like? Take us through that. Uh, how do you how do you actually work that out? Maybe you, uh, you fooled Joe. Yeah, no, it was just, you know, part of, the, part of our defense. Um, and, uh, you know, I just kind of was doing my job at the, at the moment and, you know, just doing what I do. That's just, that's just kind of how it was at that play. Uh, you know, Joe took me to the ball. I was reading his eyes the whole time. And, uh, you know, it's one I made a play on the ball. How much has that play been brought up to you as you've gone through the building over the last hour long? Yeah, I think, I, every, I think everyone I talked to so far I heard it from. Uh, you know, they, they, they said they're just happy that I'm on this side of the ball. And they, they keep saying they, they're thinking uh, Joe's happy too. <laughs> Um, I just think it was because of opportunities. You know, this it was the most opportunities I had in my career so far. Um, you know, if you if you if you, if you look, uh, people always say and say uh, that you know this is my this is my breakout year is because you know whatever it is scheme or whatever it was. But if if you go back, my first ever game it was a preseason game, my, my uh, second year. Um, I had two picks in the first half. You know, and, and then I, when I got more opportunities the next year, I had another pick against Big Ben. Um, you know, my third year, I, you know, I had opportunities, but you know, I just didn't make the most of them. And then I think last year, I just took a huge, a huge, huge stride. You know, um, and it just kind of, uh, you know, testament of my work that I think that I, that I did throughout my whole career. And, and uh, you know, I just took advantage of the opportunities. How would you describe your game, and how do you think you fit in this defense? Um, and I'll just say I'm a guy. I, mean, I think I'm, I think of myself as a ball hawk. Uh, you know, I, you know, I, I watched watching their film. Um, already, uh, I, I see myself in this defense re really well. Um, I, 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 mean, I see myself in the pose. I see myself down in the box. Um, you know, I see myself doing a bunch of different things, but, you know, I, I see myself, myself in this defense really well. You know, this defense was missing something last year and struggled in ways we haven't seen them struggle in recent years. How much was that a pitch to you to come in here and be a major part of getting things right again? Yeah, you know, the, the main thing was to come in and be able to be a communicator, um, you know, eliminate the big plays in the, in the passing game uh, and just and, and, and be a leader. And I, that's what I plan on being. Uh, that's why I've been trying to that's why I've been trying to do since my whole career, be a leader, um, you know, be a communicator on the field. Um, you know, a, a, team, a defense that's, a, that's obnoxious is great. You know, everyone's on the same page. And if you're all wrong, you're all right. So um, that's the main thing we, uh, that I want to be is a leader on the field and a leader in, in the locker room. You mentioned a lot of people had, had kind of mentioned the pick to you on Joe Burrow. Did Joe Burrow bring it up at all? Has he texted you? <laughs> yeah, I talked to him after the game. We played him last week. Uh, and then, you know, he was one of the first guys that messaged me. There was a few other guys, too. Um, but he was one of the first guys that messaged me and welcomed me to the team. So, yeah. You mentioned uh, your ability to communicate. Uh, everybody talks about your football IQ, you know, how you, you recognize and then are able to communicate quickly. I mean, is that probably one of your bigger strengths? Obviously, ball hawk, like you say, mm -hmm. physically, but you got to get yourself in position mentally. Yeah, I think that's probably one of my biggest strengths is no uh, me being where I'm, where I'm supposed to be um, and, and and knowing ball. Um, you know, it's something I've been I've probably been doing my 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 whole life, and uh, I've been around ball my whole life. So 
uh, you know, me just keep continuing to learning. That's what that's what I try to do. Because um, this 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 league, you know, you're gonna win with the mindset. You know, everyone's the same, got the same ability, whatever it is. But you know, if you're smarter than your other your opponent, uh, you know, you know what they're gonna do. You got to try to uh, you know outsmart them and and be in the right spot or, or try to you know show a different disguise and then show show them one thing and, and then do another thing. It's a trend or just a weird thing this year, but a lot of guys, a lot of regions have stayed in the division. Is, is there a significant advantage in moving to a team where you're familiar with all the other rivals that you play twice? Um. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if there's an advantage, but uh, you know, I, you you still know your team. Uh, you still know everyone in the division. Uh, it could be a little bit of advantage, but at the end of the day, you know, ball's ball. Um, wherever you go, you know, you're, you you gotta go play. You gotta go play. So, um, you know, I'm happy I get to stay in the AFC North, though. Uh, it's not far from home for me. But at the same time, uh, I know everyone in the division now. Um, and, you know, I'm just on a different team. The Lamar tweet. Did you know what he was referencing when he sent that? Or? Yeah, no, he texted me. He texted me before he even tweeted it. So um, there's, there's all there's nothing but love for Lamar. So I ain't got no I got no hate against him. That's my guy. Uh, he's my locker mate for the past three four years. So um, you know I got nothing but love for him. What did he say when he texted you? Was like, hey, are you, is it, am I cool, are you cool if I send this? Or no, he just texted me and said, laugh emoji said, go ahead and check Twitter. <laughs> hey, Gina, what's the uh, significance of the jacket? Nothing. This is you know a little nice jacket I bought. That's all. Nah. No. Yeah, so that's all it is. What's your first purchase? <sighs> Shoot, I don't know yet. Probably something for my mom. Uh, that's probably the first thing I do. Uh, She's been asking me for a lot of things, but uh, <laughs> that's probably the first thing I do. Something for my mom. What's she been asking for? A new car. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we look forward to getting to know her. What would you want to tell her today, knowing that her son just signed this new deal? Uh, I was tell her thank you for everything. Uh, thank you for raising me to be the man I am today. Um, you know, it, it, we didn't grow up the best, uh, but she but she made sure I, I grew up at that like like I had everything. Um, you know, she's 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 my rock. Uh, you know, I'll do anything in the world for her, and she knows that. And uh, you know, I, I appreciate everything she's done. I appreciate, I appreciate her uh, making me in the get in the car to go to Iowa because if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be here. Mentioned your mom, and then Coach mentioned your journey. You know, it wasn't an easy one. Um, was your mom instrumental in you just fighting through it, and never giving up, and knowing that you know it was going to work out the way you wanted it to work out eventually? Yeah, my mom. My mom was a, uh, was a was a huge part in everything I've done. Um, she's always been by my side and never let me quit and do do anything like that. So, um, you know, I, I give it, I give her all the credit. Since you mentioned it, you, you talked about her making. Um, cause I, I, I had a, I, had, I was committed to Kent state and I had a late off from Iowa come in and, um, you know, back then I didn't, I didn't even know where Iowa was on the map and, uh, didn't want to go there. I, at that point I was just trying to stay closer to home and, uh, you know, she, they, they could end up convincing me that they would drive me there cause I was saying I wouldn't fly there and, uh, I ended up go, driving through a blizzard in a storm just for one day to go visit and, uh, you know, it, it took to the point where she was like, it's OK if you leave home, like I'll be all right. And then, uh, you know, it's kind of one of the moments where we had to sit down and really wait to the last second until signing day. And that's why I, uh, you know, committed to Iowa. What, what is, you know, you've obviously had a great market at Cincinnati from, you know, being a division rival. When you look at their offense, what's been the biggest thing that kind of jumped out at you of kind of what they do well or, or kind of maybe what they looked like last year as you kind of scouted them? I mean, just how explosive they are. I mean, the guys they got. You know, they got Joe as your quarterback. You got Jamar. You got T. Um, you know, I mean, now we got you know Mike. Now you got, you got guys like that. You could put all around the field. Um, you know, you got backs that could that could get out of space and do what they do. Um, good offensive line. Uh, you know, this is you know they got they got a lot of firepower over there. Orlando Brown tweeted about uh, you and signing. Obviously, you guys were teammates in Baltimore as well. What's your relationship like with him? No. What did it mean? Yeah, no, Obi's my guy because he he's 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 been there. He knows what I went through my rookie year. Um, not, not not too many people. I mean, you see you see what it says, but not too many people really were in the building with you every day. You know, see what you really went through, see what you did to get to where you are today. And he's one of them guys that were. So um, you know, it's nothing but love for Ob. I'm happy with his teammate again. Uh, you know, that's my guy. So it, that's that's kind of where that tweet really came from. You know, were there times when you were in the NFL you didn't think you'd make it to this spot? 
saying like, I don't know if it's going to happen for me? Yeah, I mean, kind of, kind of my rookie year. Um, I went through a lot. You know, I got cut twice, um, and you know, I got, I was on a new team for, you know, five days, and then you know, I got released again. Um, you know, at that point, you know, it wasn't like it wasn't that I, I didn't think I could play in the NFL. It was just like I seen how much of a business it really was, and it was the, it's a number thing, and. And I just didn't think I would ever fall apart in anybody's number, you know. Um, and, you know, I just continued to work. Uh, I had a great mentor uh, throughout my whole career in Baltimore, um, you know. So I kind of just, you know, kept, you know, kept going. And, you know, you know I am, I'm here where I am today. Who was your mentor? Uh, I, Anthony, Anthony Levine. Yeah, no, he just, you know, he, he I mean, I, 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 he told me his journey. Um, you know, he was a guy that was a, a tryout guy, um, you know, in Green Bay. And he, he made his way throughout the practice squads and then he got to Baltimore, um, you know, and was a, just a special team guy basically almost his whole, whole career. Uh, then started uh, playing, you know, on certain packages and stuff like that. And he told me, he told me you know, do this. Kind of just not follow him, but you know I'm gonna learn what I'm gonna learn from him, and uh, he told me to keep doing what you're doing because you know one day, um, you know you're gonna you're gonna make it. And he, I mean, and I, I I told him the other day I said, bro, you never lied to me because everything you done told me is true. Uh, everything about the league, everything you said that, that was gonna happen in my career, everything became true. Where was the turning point? I mean, where was it that started? You know, you're paying your dues, paying your dues, and all of a sudden you get the opportunity to look for you capitalize on it. What, what, what was what was that? Where was that? I'll say my turning point was probably my my second year. Um, you know, a few a, a lot of guys got hurt, um, and then I had the opportunity to start playing at the end of the year, um, and then I, I was able to show that I was able to play a lot, you know, play play defense, not just special teams. Um, you know, and then last year I, I was able to my third year I was able to start seven games, and then um, you know, going into last year. Uh, you know, I just kind of—it was kind of that year for me where I just wanted to take that that big step. You know, I want to take that big leap in my career to show what I could really do, what I could really prove in this league, and be and show who I who I was. And um, I felt like I did a great job of that. I know you know who Von Bell is. Have you ever crossed paths with him, conversations or relationships? Yeah, I, I, I first met Von when I was in uh, high school. I went up to Ohio State camp, uh, and I was able to have a conversation with him. You know, he sat down with me because uh, one of my one of my close friends. Um, he just uh, was committed there, and I was able to sit down with Vaughn, talk, and uh, you know, since then, um, you know, I was able to, to reach out to him, uh, you know, after the games, and when we played them and stuff like that, just tell him, remind him of them situations, and uh, actually, he was able to, you know, meet up with him in Miami the past few years, uh, where he'd be training that and stuff like that. I didn't get to train with him, but I met him out a few times uh, through a guy that we both know, and um, actually, I was texting him last night, and then I found out about the news this morning, so I was pretty happy about it. How important, is, how important is to have a relationship with a guy that you're going to be playing next to, especially at that position? Yeah, no, it means a lot. You know, I mean, you're going to need a connection back there because you got to be on the same page. You got to make sure everyone's on the right page with you back there, uh, especially the whole defense. So, um, you know, be able to have that, that that conversation back and forth, be able to sit down, uh, watch film together, whatever it may be. You know, you need that, you need that, commu uh, that relationship. Did, you, did Vaughn seem like an old soul back then when you met him? I don't know. Not, I mean, a little bit. You know, I could tell. I mean, he was older than me, so I, I would say so. <laughs> Where do you train? Do you, do you train down there? Or, uh... Uh, I, I, I usually do about right now. I'm back home. I'm back, I'm back home, Pennsylvania. But you usually train in, in Miami? Yeah, I usually train down in Miami. Yeah. Conversations with Lou Aaron Rumo, the defensive coaches, and you're a guy that studies all kinds of tape. I mean, looking at what the Bengals do defensively, did you say this is a perfect fit for me in my home? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, just just because I, I remember watching film on, on Vaughn and Jesse and seeing how they were, and I can see I would just see myself, you know, in, in that in that role in, in that situation the same same way they were, um, you know. So that's that's kind of kind of how it is. I was already watching a little bit of film, and um, you know, I just see myself right in this defense and around the guys. You know, it's it's gonna be different for me, probably, but uh, it's gonna it's, it's be something I learn, and I'll I'll, I'll, I'll learn it though. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take a little bit of a break now and keep you guys posted.